And he influenced uh, he he influenced uh, Darius. Yep. He influenced Cyrus. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, he had a good enough influence that um, I understand that Cyrus was a, was called. He was a believer. Uh, you're not going to convince me this man wasn't a believer when right. you read what Cyrus says that's right. and makes the decree. Okay, uh, that's the influence of Daniel. Amen. You, look, it's like this: um, when you get saved, you know what you do? You change your destiny. Yeah. When you believe that book, it changes your mouth. Yep. Amen. That you, you can't talk, not say something. Right. Right. You cannot say, I've never met it where uh, a guy, why? Because uh, it's like if a guy doesn't believe it, if a guy doesn't, he, he has to say it's words of men. Mm-hmm. If When you hear a man say, well, I think it's just, a, just the best translation, he, he has no doubt that he says he has to be reading the words of men. Which usually I always say he's a carnival act. Why? Right. Because before that, and I was in this type of a church, it was a TR church, the guy used to get up and he'd say, we're going to read from the scriptures. And he used to read. And then he would uh, sit, at, go get up for his sermon and he would explain it. <laughs> and, um, and then later on, I would, I'd, I'd come to him and I'd say, well, you know, the book says this and the book says this. And he says, no, um, in the Greek, it, would, it really says this. Mm. I said, well, you said you were reading Scripture. Mm. Come on. Amen. Now think about that. If you say it's Scripture, it, that means what? It's, it's perfect. Amen. It's, an error. it's not has an error. Okay. If you say you've got Scripture in your hand, right. you don't have any error in your hand. Uh, if you have, you, it's like saying this. It's God's Word when it agrees with me, but when it doesn't agree with me, it's no longer God's Word. Mm. Hey, look, it's like this. You ever get a guy up, he gives a message. Okay, and you say, man, when it agrees with you, hey, woo, God spoke to me. That was God's message. And then all of a sudden he gets up two weeks, three weeks later, and he preaches something you don't like. Come on. And it really bites to the bone. No longer was it God's message, it was your message, and you were targeting me. Right, come on. Well, what happened in there? Well, it got personal. Yep. It wasn't God's fault, it was your fault. <laughs> Amen. Why? Well, uh, sooner or later you've got to learn, learn something. Uh, he's right. Now, when you read the Bible and, and you don't agree with something the first day, I know you're right, Lord. You, you don't have to agree with it. But you have to understand, he's right. Right. Amen. <laughs> Come on. He's right. And if you can take that approach, like I said, you don't have to agree with him. But you have to understand something. He's right. Yes, sir. If you can take that approach, he can work with you. But he already understands you're a broken vessel. Amen. But yeah. you have to understand he's always right. Amen. Okay. That's right. Amen. And if you can understand that, he can work with you. Why do you think he was able to work with Peter? Yeah. And Peter had foot in the mouth disease the whole oh, time. Yeah. Yeah, amen. But he was he he may have, you know, I mean, we have I, I'd say in today in Christianity, we have a lot of kind of Peters. They like to charge out and then they get uh, uh they get slaughtered, you know, basically. Charge on, you know, Leroy Jenkins and all that stuff, and charge on yeah. and, and guess yeah. what? Then they get but today they get offended and yeah. Wow. Right. Peter, I'll tell you one thing, he could repent. Amen. Yeah. And he knew how he knew where uh, uh he knew godly sorrow. Right. Yeah. Amen. So we're gonna look at this book. Like I said, you got the spiritual look at it from Ezra. Now we're gonna go into the civil look. Okay? And then we're gonna see uh later on how Esther fits right in between. Okay, this is on one scroll. This guy's a civil leader uh in here. And um I'd say it like this. Ezra kind of Ezra kind of gets them spiritually ready. But spiritually ready doesn't mean anything. Uh, there needs to be a, sometimes a little less hua and a little more dua. Yep. Right. Amen. You have to realize. I know we can sit in a church house, and I've been in church houses, everybody screaming and yelling. <laughs> and then nobody doing anything during the week. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. <clears throat> Now, the Lord had already given out the commandments, but watch what he says to them. He says in, uh, look at verse number three. He says, uh, hear therefore, O Israel. 
And do what? And observe to what? To do it. He just gave the kid. Observe to what? To do it. Now that you got them, now do them. Right. Now do them. That it may be well with thee. And that ye may do what? Increase mightily. Yeah. As the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. It's not enough just to know it. It's a lot. It, it, you've got to do something right. about it. Look, the church of Ephesus, they had a great, they had, they had the inward look. They knew great doctrine. They could tell you who was an apostle, who wasn't an apostle. They tried the spirits, by the spirits. They had great doctrine. They had an inward look. Uh, they had the outward look, get more people saved and everything else. Uh, we gotta, we got we to gotta, we gotta get more people in the, in the body of Christ. They just lost their upward look. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you'll notice all those churches, church, the churches have, have a lot of deficiencies. Let's face it, if we look at Laodicea, I shouldn't say it's not Laodicea. It's the La it's the church of Laodiceans. It's our church. Yeah. It's the people's. If we look at that church, he's all over it. Repent. Just hear my voice. What's that? Repent. You're getting rebuked. You're getting chastened. Repent. You need to learn how to repent for a church. And it's the one thing. Now, if he's saying you need to repent, guess what we're not doing? Yeah. Repent. Yeah, exactly. But you don't have to be that way. Amen. You don't have to follow suit. There's always, there's always that one little group that God deals with. Now the Bible says in chapter one, it says, uh, "These, are the, these, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hachaliah." And it came to pass in the month of Shizlu, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan the palace, that Hanani, uh, one of my brethren, came, and he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned uh, with fire. <clears throat> the Father, bless thy word in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, I, I would assume right after he said that, what's what's going on down there? I, I would assume that Nehemiah is looking for a good answer. Yeah. How's everything going down there? I mean, we, we don't we, look when missionaries come in. Uh, we we usually would go, hey, how is everything over there? Yeah. And, and usually, what do they do? They give you the great look at it. You know, oh, well, everything's great. When was the last time you heard a missionary come in and say yeah, everything's safe, it's falling apart? Yeah, come on. And done. You, you know the problem with that is. <laughs> You wouldn't give him a dime. Yep. He wouldn't get a dime if you were to tell him. If he, you know, it's uh, it's kind of like this. One day I I, I was in um, I, I was in, uh, in near the Anaconda area up in uh, Iraq in OSA Anaconda, and um, they had asked about a, a civil affairs situation outside in one of the towns. Now a cleric was leading that town, he, and, and it was a mess. There was caches out there and everything yeah. else. Well, the general asked the question, "How are things out there?" Mm. I, I got to tell you something. Generals don't know what's going on, right? And the reason why, why they don't know what's going on is because nobody tells the truth to them. Yep. Yeah. Come on. The situation was poor. Why? You you could tell back home. The situation was poor. And guess what? You know what he was hearing every day? Oh, it's great. It's really good. It's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. You should. Uh, we have everything going on, sir. Why? They're afraid they're going to lose their job. Right. That's right. And their status. If not, look. You know what? You know what a captain cares about? Make a major. Yep. You know what a major cares about? Make a lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. That's what they care about today. They could care less about the mission. They care about what? Hey, look. I don't know if it works that way in your job, but the way it's been working with me is the first thing that happens when something goes wrong is they ask who's at fault. Yep. You know what they forgot to do? Let's fix the problem. Exactly. Let's blame somebody before we find out what's. What's going on? If we would concentrate on the project and, and what's who not to blame and trying to get things to work together with selflessness and charity, things would probably work. You know, that's the way the church is actually supposed to work. Mm -hmm. That is how we're supposed to, that's how it's supposed to happen. Amen. With charity. So uh, back to the book, it says uh, the words of Nehemiah. Nehemiah's name, the Lord is my comfort. He's the son of Hachaliah. The Lord is 
hidden. Now think of that. One guy is a comfort, the other guy says it is the Lord is hidden. Now, uh, Nehemiah and his father, it, it goes hand in hand. What's that? The Lord was hidden for a while, wasn't he? Right. And, uh, and now uh, the Lord is my comfort. Nehemiah, a guy who uh, becomes a, a political type of figure. He's a political figure. And, and it came to pass in the month of Shizlu, which is a roughly the month falls between about November 25th to about December 25th. We'll say it's in December right here. In the 20th year... As I was in Shushan, the palace, that's about two, uh, 200 miles from Babylon. How do you, I've seen it. I've seen the area. It's about 200 miles uh, from, uh, to the east, east of Babylon. They, they, they didn't need it there anymore. They went to build a city. Uh, it's normal. That Hanani, Hanani uh, one of my brethren, he came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped which were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant. You notice what he just said? The yep. remnant. Come on. That's a very important word in the Bible, the remnant. Uh, the remnant is always there. It always remains that there's a remnant. I mean, Elijah is out there. He goes into a, he goes out in the wilderness. Right. He gets into a cave. And, and the Lord turns around and comes to him and says, what, what are you doing here? Right, come on. What are you doing here? Well, you know, let me tell you something. I'm always out there. I'm the one that's always taking. I'm out there with the tracks. I'm the one that believes the book. And, and you know, I've been doing the ministry thing the whole time. I'm, I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then all of a sudden, he wraps himself up in his religion, his mantle. Yeah, come on. Gets back into his thing. What's the Lord say? What are you doing here? Amen. What are you doing here? And, he, and you know what he does? He says it again. He repeats it to the Lord. And what's the Lord say to him? I got a remnant back there. I got 7,000 people. That's right. no. What are you doing down here? I got 7,000 people up there. Why aren't you with the 7,000 people? What are you out here by yourself? Okay? You're supposed to be their prophet. You know what you're supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be pre preaching to these people. Right. You're supposed to be exhorting these people. You're supposed to be comforting. What are you doing down here? Amen. Well, you don't know. I'm the only one. Okay, here you go, buddy. You want to be the only one? Guess what? I'm going to set you up with a new mission here. I got two great missions that you're not going to accomplish. And guess what? Go find your replacement. Right? Amen. Wow, what an incredible thing to have to do. Why do you think Eli uh, Elijah was not nice to Elisha? He was That's always right. trying to get away from the guy. Yep. If you just stay here, I'll go forward. No, no I'm not going to leave you. <laughs> I mean, he treated him, treated him terribly. Yeah. Even to the point where he had to throw a, a, a fiery chariot in the middle to separate him. It never said the ch chariot took him up. It said a whirlwind took him up. Right. You see, you got to read the scriptures. It had to separate him. Why? Because Elisha wasn't letting go. <laughs> he wasn't letting go. Ten years ministered to him. But getting back to this part, there's always a remnant. Uh, go to Isaiah chapter 11. There's always a remnant. Isaiah 11. In Isaiah 11, looking down at uh, verse number, the last verse, in fact. He says, and there shall uh, be a highway, where? For the remnant. Going on the right way. Amen. A high, look at the word, high way. Amen. Where are you looking at to get on higher ground? And God made, I'm the way, the highway. Hey, look, when you got saved, you realize you got on the highway. Amen. It's the highway. Not that it's going fast. It's the highway. Amen. It's the highway. Uh, there And there shall be a highway for who? For the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, uh, like as it was to uh, Israel in the day that they came up out of the land of Egypt. Just like those days, it's going to be again. Uh, go over to, go back to uh, Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 4, uh, looking at verse number uh, 3, says, And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem, 
shall be called what? Holy. Amen. Shall be called holy. Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Uh, that remnant, he's talking, God looks at that remnant, and boy, oh boy, he really looks at it. You know, there's a remnant today. You get a remnant today, and we know who it is. Don't be ignorant. Yeah. You, you've got to understand something. God, the, when you are ignorant, you're willingly ignorant. Right, right. come on. You're the remnant. How do you know? Well, it's Sunday night. Yeah, where's everybody home. else? Amen. Amen. Okay, where's everybody else tonight? Look, it's like this. You got church in the daytime. You got Sunday school, you got church. You got your main service. That's where most of the people are going to come in. And then at nighttime, who are they? Well, they're the people that want to know about the Lord. And then you got Wednesday night. Who's that? Well, they guess what? They're the ones that love it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to be. What I'm saying is that push to be there. That push to be there. Why? Where two or more are gathered in what? In his name. In his name. Yes. In his name. You know he's around their kitchen table popping turkey into their mouth going, God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, come on. <laughs> you know, you, you know, oh, I hear it all the time. I worship at home. I'm, I can sit here. I don't need a place. Mm. What time are you worshiping? I'll come over. I'll sit yeah. down. I, I want to worship too. How about it? They never give me a date, never give me a time. Mm -hmm. Why? You ain't got one. You ain't got one. And what you'll notice most of the time is people who stay home, uh, are people there's a bunch of sour pusses. Yep. Amen. That's right. How do you know? Because I was one of them. Yeah, come on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you get far away from the Lord and you just don't even want to get in sometimes. Right. Why? Because you've gotten to the point where misery loves that company. Right. Amen. So he says there's always a remnant. It's on the high road. Okay? And uh, he said that, that there are left in captivity there in the province. Uh, they're in great affliction. Great affliction and reproach. Okay, so there's a remnant, right? And the remnant is in what? Is in great affliction and reproach. Uh, you have to understand something. F to be the remnant, to be and stay uh, close to the Lord, I want you to understand, you've got a price to pay. Yep. Amen. There's a price to pay if you want to stay close to the Lord. How do you know? Uh, uh, Peter, do you love me? Lovest thou me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love you. Feed my sheep. Right. All those guys, there's a price to pay. Amen. You want to get, look, uh, it's like this. The closest guy to the Lord, he's as close to the devil as he can get. Mm -hmm. You think the devil's dealing with these people that know? He's, going, he's wondering what Job is doing. Yep. He's wondering what Job is doing. Why? He's the guy close. He's the guy that's close. So the remnant, uh, a remnant is, uh, is going to be in great affliction and because there's a price to pay here. And he says the, uh, the wall of Jerusalem also, also is broken down. And the gates uh, thereof are burned with fire. And I think Nehemiah, yes, he was looking for good news right there. He wasn't looking for any bad yeah, news. Yeah, that's right. I I'd like to hear what's going on back at home. Oh, well, it's a travesty mm -hmm. back home. It it's a mess that's back home. And, and uh, so what's the first reaction? It says, and it came to pass when I heard these words. When I heard, it must be really bad. And he heard these words that I sat down and wept yeah. and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now let me ask you something. We got churches out here and and, and, and if you were to look on the high side of everything, you'd say, wow, well, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, you walk around our little town right here, I think everybody says they're saved. If you walk down the block and ask salvation, say, they all say they're saved. But when you get to talk to them about it, then you say, wait a second. Yep, come on. What's going on here? Yeah. Amen. You're, yeah. What's happening is that by the, by the hindsight, so look, I went down south. I knocked doors down south. I got to tell you, I've never met anybody who wanted to save down south. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I bang on the door, how, how you doing? And uh, oh, I'm safe, I'm safe. They knew the lingo. Right. But as you talk to them more, you know what you found out? They weren't safe at all. Yep. Uh, how many people have ever heard this one? Knock the door, how you doing? Are you, and you say, uh, have you ever been born again? I was baptized. Yep. Amen. Come on. Hey, look, it, doesn't, it gets as close to home as this. I even heard my own kids turn around and say, my dad is a preacher. Yeah. <laughs> like it's some special ticket. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'm in, Daddy's a preacher. No, that doesn't do it. Right. I, I sat. I sat with a. Uh, I was down the street preaching down in Watertown. I had a, a 
a guy, he was a Pentecostal guy. I said to him, I said, are you saved? He says to me, he goes, well, and I'm a Assemblies God preacher. I said, you saved? Right? Amen. Come on. He turns around and he goes, well, I went to the board of the Pentecost, of, of the Assemblies of God. I said, you saved? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I said, he said, well, let me tell you something, son. <laughs> As he stood there with his uh, short shorts on. <laughs> and says to me, uh, if you were to go through the Assemblies of God board, you'd understand. I said, hey, knuck- knucklehead, are you saved? Amen. He says, oh, yes, I'm saved. Of course I'm saved. I said, now, we could have got through this conversation, this 10-minute conversation of you trying to give me your resume, and I could have been on my way, but now I'm worried about if you saved or not. Right. Amen. I said, you need to knock off your high horse. Amen. And realize that we're concerned about souls today. Amen. Not concerned about your resume. You see? Are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. Why don't you just say the guy, you're saved. (laughs) Are, Are you embarrassed of it? Are you embarrassed? He says, uh, he says in here, he says he got down. What was his idea? What did he do? He mourned and it said certain days. I don't think certain days means like three. Right. I think you're, there's a longevity here. Why? Uh, look at over there in the chapter two, and it says, and it came to pass in the month of Nisan. Well, that's Passover area. Mm-hmm. Where were we starting? Back in December. And we're going all the way up to Passover. Yep. This is a long time. This is a, look, there's a process. There's a process of, of things. He go, It says, uh, it came to pass when he heard these words that I sat down. And you notice he has the I in there. It's not talking in third person. I right. sat down Amen. and wept. And he just doesn't leave it there. There's a difference. There's a difference between weeping mm-hmm. and mourning. Mourning changes a lot of things. It's like going to a funeral. I'm mourning. Uh, 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 widows know there's nobody else that knows more about mourning than a widow. Amen. Why? Because uh, they go through what's called a, not just a, a separation of right there, and you know everybody's on top of them about the money situation and everything else. Yeah, but on. you know what they deal with more? They're they're dealing with a physical kind of spiritual separation. Yeah. That they they're no longer there. It's, I don't have that anymore. A hey, one day I had him that was in his arms. The next day it's it's just not there. Mm-hmm. And you don't get the realization until it happens to you. That's right. It just and it's a mourning time. You know, people. I oh, hope you comfort them and comfort them. They they need to mourn. Yeah, amen. There has to be a mourning time. Why? They have to go through it. They have to go through it. It's a separation that they have to uh, go through. You realize something? There's the, it's the second uh, relationship. What's that? First is you and God. What did He give second? Adam had a wife. Was number two. So there's something as mourning. He had a there. It, it makes it even more concerned. He mourned certain days, and, and he took it seriously. What happened? He started fasting. He started to afflict himself. Mm-hmm. The the bonds of affliction. The affliction it talks about in the Bible. The bread of affliction. He fasted, and what else? And, and prayed. And he prayed, and he, and he did it before. You notice how it says before yeah. the God of heaven. Before there's a difference in he, he, it's like when you pray, um, you can get down and be before the chair, or you can be in the throne room before Amen. the Lord. What do you mean? Well, you know what I mean. Are you serious about it? Right. Amen. He's saying he's before the Lord. What's that? He's serious about this. Right. And, and you know there are some things. Look, uh, people say I know the heart. I know the heart. I know the heart. Uh, but God knows the heart. He's looking at the inside. He's looking on the inside. Let me tell you something. There's some physical things that make God. Stop right. and turn. Yep. How do you know? Well, I've read Jesus' life. There's things that made him, yes, that sir. people got his attention, and they were physical things. What's, uh, you know, I think a lot of times uh, people say, you know, people were born into some type of a, of a religion. A lot of times they'll bring them to Christ. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they're rhythmically uh, there trying to do good, and, and, they, and, and they're brought before it. Uh, didn't he say that the law was what? The schoolmaster. Mm-hmm. To do what? Bring you to Christ. Yep. And you'll notice in the Bible, those, those pictures are always there. Uh, guys are, are dealing with the law, and what do they do? They run into Christ. Mm-hmm. They're just brought right into to Christ. And here he is. He's getting serious. I want to get serious with the God of heaven. Verse 5, and I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and uh, terrible God that keepeth a covenant. I like that part. You know why? Mm-hmm. It says the Lord keeps covenant. Amen. We, we don't. 
You know, uh, every covenant in the Bible is the greatest covenant uh, because it's like the Lord makes a, an agreement with you and then he does all the work. But then there's one covenant where he says, well, let me see if man can do a little bit. And he says, he gives it. He gives this thing out called what we call the Mosaic Law. It's the law, the moral law. And you know what he says, if and then. Mm-hmm. Why? Because <laughs> you're not going to do it. <laughs> if it relies on men. That's why when, it, when somebody says to me, they say, well, you know, I, I have to keep my salvation. Well, if God didn't let you have anything in the in getting saved, why would he trust you in keeping saved? Right. I, I mean, he knows right away you'd mess up. Uh, there's no way you could handle doing any... Uh, well, you know, because believe me, <laughs> Brother Grady, if you, were, if you could do something to stay saved... You'd go up there, you'd brag to him when you got there. Yeah. Look what I did, look what I did, I did this, I did this. No flesh going glory before God. Amen. Amen. There's no flesh going to glory before you. Amen. So, he's serious in this. He beseeches the God of heaven that keepeth a covenant. And it says, and mercy, and mercy uh, for them that what? That love him. Amen. Who are they? Well, if you love me, what do you do? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. There's obser- an observation of the commands. Uh, for them that love me and observe observe his commandments. You know what he's looking at? He's looking at the remnant. Why? They're the ones that do it. Uh, they're the ones that are here tonight. Look, you, if, if we were actually in the Old Testament, yeah, we'd all have a farm trying to get all the animals and herbs or something like that. But I want you to understand it would be you guys doing it. Mm-hmm. It would be you guys doing it. Why? You're the remnant. You're the one that loves God. That's right. Why do you think you're here tonight? Let thine ear now be attentive. You notice how he says first is always ear gate? Yes. Never the eye gate first. I want you to hear first. Faith cometh by hearing. Let thine ear now be attentive. And thine eyes open. You've got to know what's going around uh, in front of you. That thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant. I want you to hear my prayer. The prayer of who? Thy servant. What's that? The person who's going to, who's going to serve you, Lord. Amen. Hear my prayer. Yeah. Which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants. And, and confess the sins of the children of Israel. Did you ever take a good look at the church? Did you ever take a good look at the church? I yeah. mean, we're, we're called out as a holy nation. Come on. If you look at the church today, it's all in idolatry, right? I'm not, hey, look, I'm talking about God's people. Right, come on. We're idolatrous. I'm talking about the universal body of Christ in the whole. They're saved people. Uh, they're idolaters. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we see it more in America than anywhere else. Why? Because we love money. And we got a lot of stuff. Yep. I mean, if I was a, the poorest guy that we know, the poorest person we know, if we were to take that person over to India, they're rich men. Mm-hmm. Amen. Those people are being now uh, over in other countries. We're rich people. Now... You look at us in a whole, even in America, you know what you do? You, see, you, you sit there and you see an idolatrous, uh, you see an adulterous uh, nation. When was the last time you prayed for that? Right. Come on. Yeah. Amen. When was the last time you confessed the sins of your people? That's right. The church. Nehemiah is sitting here and he takes a, a look and he says, let me, let, me, let me look at this. And he says, uh, the prayer of thy servant, I pray thee. And he says, and, and confess the sins of the Children of Israel. Do you remember a guy who kind of prayed like this in Daniel? Yep. Lord, we have sinned. Amen. He got the book of Jeremiah and he looked at it and he saw what people what was recorded in there and, and he turned around, looked at it, and saw, wow, we're going to be in captivity 70 years. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah has it right here. And why? Well, we didn't we didn't do a Sabbath year. For 490 years. Of all those kings, we didn't do a Sabbath year. I think God was being pretty light on them. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He was being pretty light. There's other things in there that didn't keep either. They didn't keep the Passover, but how many times? Mm. It makes you start to think. So he says, I'm going to confess the sins of Israel. Was, hey, I got a question for him. When was the last time you confessed the sins, confessed sins of what your family's doing? Amen. Job did. Mm-hmm. Amen. Why not? If you're a father here, uh, when your kids were young, guess what? Guess who's responsible? Right. You were responsible, you know. He says, uh, he confessed the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house. 
have sinned. You notice how he put the I in there? Mm -hmm. Why? He's responsible too. He's a responsible man. He's responsible for these things. We have dealt very corruptly against thee. This is, he's taking it right to God. He says, we have dealt very corruptly against thee. Uh, did you ever, um, you know, uh, I'm not trying to pick out your uh, all your sins, but let me tell you something. Did you ever make a vow to the Lord? Come on. Amen. When you're really young in the Lord, you usually do. Yeah. And then always somebody preaches about it to you and puts it in front of your face. You made a vow to the Lord. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, you shouldn't have vowed that. And, you know, it's you should never have vowed. Never even, i got to tell you something. God's a realist. Right. He understood when Job was sitting there, and Job in the third chapter is saying, Cursed be the day I was born. And, and, uh, and you know, uh, uh, I should have just died from the womb and, and down the line. And there goes Eliphaz, starts reacting to everything Job is saying. Yeah. Instead of just turning around and, and react just like God is. And what's that? He's just talking. Mm -hmm. The guy's just lamenting. The guy's in sorrow. You know, once in a while, you need to look at it that way. The guy's, the guy's hurting. The guy's in sorrow. Okay? And uh, we have dealt very corruptly with thee. We have dealt very, we have dealt with the Lord very corruptly. Why? We know and we do not do. Hey, look, i got to tell you something. We don't believe in Calvinism, but by deed we do. Yeah, come on. We are not Calvinists in thought. We are not Calvinists by the book. The book is totally against Calvinism, right. but by deed we are. Yeah, how about That's right. But by deed we are. As a church, mm -hmm. we are. He says in here, he says, we dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant of Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Did you ever read Deuteronomy 28? That's what he's talking about. Deuteronomy 28, you realize even in Deuteronomy 28, there's a place, there's a place that God turns around and he says that someday you're going to get so, 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 so rotten with this. Right. There's going to become a time where somebody's going to even try and buy you, and, and they're, 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 you're going to be want to be bought, and they're not going to be able to. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to. Uh, just so you know, historically, now historically, uh, just before World War II, just before World War II came in, uh, we could have bought the Jews and brought them here. We refused. Mm -hmm. We refused to do it. He says, uh, you've transgressed. He, but remember, the Bible said that, that, they, that somebody, but they're not going to be able to. You're going to go through it. Okay, you're going to go through this. If you transgress, I'll, I'll scatter you uh, abroad among the nations. You know, uh, sometimes you need um, a checkup from the neck up. Yeah. You need a checkup. That's a good cliche. Uh, you can take that, Steve, down to uh, uh, Florida. Sometimes you need to check up from the neck up. Right. Amen. What's that? You need to sit down and see how your mind thinks. Right. Come on. Amen. You, you know, uh, and see, get your check. Look, we have an advantage. We have an advantage. Look, when they came out of the garden, you know what he said to them? Uh, you're going to live by conscience now. Mm -hmm. Remember what Satan said to them. You'll be your own gods. What's that? You'll be your own judges. You'll, you'll be able to choose from wrong or right. And what happened? Man, he had to float them out. Mm -hmm. Why? They picked the wrong way. Right. That's right. By the time uh, Enos comes along, he's he's got to, he's got to call out to the Lord, and that's when men started calling upon the name of the Lord. Why we're getting surrounded here? Mm -hmm. Man was exceedingly wicked. By the time uh, Noah comes around, it takes him five hundred years to find a wife. Why? There ain't anything good. Right. There wasn't anything good. That's how he he said it. They, they just got they they got exceeding. They were exceedingly wicked back then. And that's how, that's man. I mean, this book doesn't look at a good picture of man. And just so you know, we're a picture, the church right now is a picture at the end of, of, uh, of Chronicles. What's that? We're the remnant. We're, Ju we're Judah. The remnant that was split apart. And here we are. And guess what? We're following the same footsteps in yep. idolatry right yeah. now. That's right. Yeah. We're, if we were looking at church and we said we are a nation, a holy nation. And if we look at us as, as a nation, where's the church today? It's 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 a it's an idolatrous nation. That's right. Today, 
If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. And that's what's happened to the church too. But if you turn unto me, if you repent, Amen. But if you turn unto me and do what? And, and keep my commandments and do them. Though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen uh, to set my name there. God's intention Amen. is always one thing. I want to bring you back. Amen. God's intention has always been, I want to bring you back. You want to go, God wants to bring you back. Right. That's. A, I mean, look at Abraham. I want to go. Uh, I'm, I'm the one guy who answered the call. I'm the one guy who looked up. I'm going to make a nation out of you. And Abraham get, goes down to where? He goes down to Egypt. And he brings him back and he already shows him, man, you're really... You really messed up. You lied to the guy down there. Right. And then he goes right down to the Philistines and does it again. Yeah. The same exact lie. He says to Ahimelech, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, she's my sister. Right. And he's playing like a half lie, but we know it's a lie. Yeah. He plays a half yeah. lie, and it's, it's a lie. And what happens there, and I always laugh at it, is Ahimelech reproves him. Right. And guess what? His son does the same thing, and, and, him, and Ahimelech, his son, he, he reproves him. Yeah. Hey, not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy when you look at his character. He's a pretty good guy. I think there's a possibility he, he knew the Lord. Yeah. If you look at him, uh, maybe, you know, I mean, he's, he's down there with guys like Abraham. Yep. And he said, yeah, Abraham, let Abraham pray for your wife. Well, why would you let the guy that was unsaved pray? Amen. I mean, think about it. You ever been to a, you've been to a meal and, and uh, they say, well, who wants to pray? Well, let's, let, let's let that person over there pray. Why would we let that pray? They're not even saved. Right. Got, I can imagine God sitting there going, look, not everybody's a child of God. Amen. And, and if you really think that, uh, like a Methodist thinks or something like that, good. I'll bring the local child molester home, put him at your table. You can take care of him. Why? He's your child. Right. Come on. Amen. Yes or no? There's a reality check in that. Not everybody's a child of God. You know, you know uh, God loved everybody enough to die on the cross for him. But let me tell you something. You reject his son, and sure enough, he'll throw you out. Yep. Amen. Amen. And he didn't put you there. You put yourself there. That's he gave you a way right. out. Amen. That's right. Come on. You have transgressed, and I will scatter you abroad. But if you turn, repent. Do you know that every preacher preaches repent? And you got preachers today that are saying you don't need to repent. But everybody said repent. Turn. That's what the preaching is. What? Repent. Right. Turn back to God. Amen. Turn unto me and, and keep my commandments. You notice how it's turn unto me first? He's not turned around. Amen. This isn't a salvation call. It's look, these are my people. Repent. Get back to me, my people. Amen. And do what? Keep my commandments after you turn back. I want your heart first and then do something. Yeah. And what it why? Because he said, and do them. He says, bring them un under the place. I'll bring them under the place I've chosen to set my name. It's a like reconciliation, and that's how the Lord is. Mm -hmm. Now, these are thy servants. And thy these are thy servants and thy people. I mean, these are the very saved right here. These are, these are thy servants and, and thy uh, people. And, and you know you keep it like it's a light thing. No, 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 you don't understand. Come on. Now, yeah. these are thy servants and thy people. Look, when I go before God, this is one of the things I always like to say. I always say to the Lord, I talk about his people, and, and I say, these, these are your people. Amen. Amen. The, these are your people. These are your servants, Lord. Why? He knows who they are. Yeah. And he knows everyone. He knows who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed. By thy great power, you redeemed. Amen. You're you're his people. Amen. Come on. I I I I I I try to exhort you what to be a servant now. Right. Come on. Be a servant. And, and by thy great power and by thy strong hand, oh Lord, I beseech thee. I'm begging you. Mm -hmm. I'm begging you, Lord. Let thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy. Thy servant. I, I gotta ask you a question. You, you think the Lord, the Lord hears this prayer? 
I mean, you as be a, be a, be critical and even think about it. Did the Lord hear this prayer? You better believe the Lord's hearing a prayer like this. That's why He recorded this prayer. Amen. There's just, there's some prayers in the Bible God just stops everything. I, I got to hear this prayer. Yeah. yeah. I, I got Hey, look, uh, there's this lady. She needs to meet me. I got to hear that. Yep. I, I, I must needs go through uh, Samaria. Hey. Why? There's a lady up there waiting for me. Hey, you know something? Who touched me? Well, you don't realize there's a whole bunch of people around. No, 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 I'm not. there's somebody back here. Why? To take that way, uh, have an issue of blood for 12 years, can't come outside, everybody going to yell at her, she's unclean, she's a dirty woman, and everything else, and, and she sneaks out there, takes the opportunity to get there. If I could just touch the hem of his garment. Amen. I'm going to recognize her. Mm -hmm. You know, did you never notice that uh, not every uh, situation is in every one of the Gospels, but there's one that's in all of them? When Mary comes in, mm -hmm. she's got that box. Right. It's everything she has, the spikener. Do you know that spikener would work about $40,000 today? Mm -hmm. She put it all out, wiped his feet with it, and there's, geez, good. we could have gave that money to the poor. He didn't care about that 300 bucks. He cared about taking away spiritual blessings. Right. Let me ask you something. Do you care about everybody else's spiritual blessings? Mm. You ever see when somebody wants to take them away? Mm. Mm. Hey, how about this one? Somebody, you're, you're over there, and uh, we have kids that get saved. Okay? Now, God's got a special place for kids. You yes. can't be yeah. yeah. able not see that. Yeah. He's very easy with the kids. Why? He wants to get them early. Yeah. Right? He wants to get them early. And, and I, I actually, I think it's a rotten. I go to all these revivals, and they always bring some slug up like myself that lived a dirty life, who's got a lot of sin, he gets up there and he talks about how bad he was. Like, look, let me tell you, you know what he's really, know what they're really saying? It took more blood to get him saved. Yeah, come on. Why don't we take one of these kids that got saved at four or five years old and has been battling his whole life. Right, right. It's a more of a struggle to do it that way than it is some, some scumbag like myself who, who, who stayed in the pit mm -hmm. and knew how to get saved. Well, we need his testimony. No, we don't. I yeah. the testimony of them kids that are little kids and they got saved as a young kid and they, they love them, they've been trying and they're really fighting. Why? They're the ones under the temptation. That's yep. right. They're the ones under the temptation. He says, O, o Lord, I beseech thee, let thine ear uh, be attentive to thy prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy uh, servants who desire to do what? Fear thy Name. Amen. You know, that's, a, that's something to do is to fear God. Now, we were talking about that last night. Fear God. Uh, there's a gospel uh, if, in uh, Revelation chapter 14. He says an angel rides around. And he says he gives out what we call the everlasting gospel. And what, is it, what does it say? He says, fear God and what? Worship Him. Worship him. Yep. Fear God and worship Him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Job chapter one, uh, Job was an upright and a perfect man. Was a perfect and upright man. He feared God, and he skewed evil. That's Amen. an A B conversation. He he was yep. perfect. What's that? He feared God. Yep. He's perfect. He feared God. Everlasting gospel. And then you get everybody else who wants to split the dispensational hair and say, "Well, that's the gospel now." Mm. You get a, get a little bit smarter. They just didn't turn around and change everything out. Jesus Christ is the preeminence in all Amen. things. Okay? That's something you have to understand. Jesus Christ gets the preeminence. Once you knew his name, his preeminence, he gets the preeminence right, right there. Okay? Uh, what's, the, what's the everlasting gospel? That's something that started with Adam. Mm. It's going to go all the way through. What's that? It's good news, man. You've got to fear God. Come on. You need a fear. Of God, and that's not being afraid. Oh, we're going to come. Look, that's like I, I, it's easy to say. Look, he wanted Israel, and he said, "Look, I always want want you underneath my arm, that I would hold on to you, my hand, as a hen with her chicks. And when you leave and you get outside of that, you're out there. You're Jonathan. What's that? He got killed on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. A good man that gets killed on the wrong side. Why? You're out there in the storm. Stay here. Right." Don't get out there. He says that fear thy name and prosper. Well, you think the prosper is always something that's going to be um, uh, uh, physical. 
But, you know, the best uh, things to, to prosper in. I mean, could you imagine uh, having all the wealth in the world, having the great prominence, having a terrible prayer life? Yeah. Oh. You know, uh, the Lord says you'll bear fruit. And you know what everybody thinks? It's like, oh, you'll bear fruit. Well, you know, they'll have a lot of people around them. Or they'll, they'll bear a lot of kids. That's the fruit. And where there's a lot of people, well, we're bearing fruit. You know, people are getting saved. Have you read the book? What about joy? Right in them. He says bearing fruit is what? Are those things that are unseen. That's why you can't be a fruit inspector. You can sit and maybe see that <laughs> somebody, yeah, but you don't on. need to inspect it. We always look at that. We say, hey, look, you know, uh, we're not getting, I'm not, I'm not seeing the fruit. I'm not seeing the fruit. I'm not seeing the fruit. That's because you ain't got it either. Right. Why would you be that critical and look for it? You'll see it. Don't worry. You all know. Well, they're just not bearing. They don't go to church. They don't do this. They don't do that. They don't. Don't you want to bear some fruit first? Amen. We have a tendency to try and clean up the yep. person. Uh, I, I will tell you, uh, I look at Bible, this is Bible college. Bible college, this is, that, this is the theory. Get a person saved, get them in a skirt, get them there Sunday morning, and let them go. Mm -hmm. And then, get them out on the doors, the bang of doors, get them out working, work, 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 <laughs> service, service, service. You know what they never learn how to do? They never learn how to love God. That's right. right. Amen. I've had missionaries even come in. Most of the younger ones that went to Bible schools and all that stuff, they come in, they're so more worried about their flyers and their and their agenda. Yeah. And I sit there and I say, well, you know, you should be teaching these people the love of God. That's right. But they see they, they, they got this one generation up here. It's what? Numbers, 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 numbers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's what they're pushing. Yeah. You can't go back to the school and go to the go to the instructor and say, why? Well, I, I, you know, I, I only had four people. Right, come on. I only had four people. Well, Jesus only had 12. Amen. Amen. I mean, Peter and all them, they weren't sitting there with these big crowds. Either was Paul. But the guys that were around them, you know what they did? They bear fruit. What? They, they loved the Lord. I care less if we, I'd rather have, I'd rather have like 10 people, maybe nine people, that love the Lord, and, and I could get up here and I could actually uh, preach a message. It's not just like the regular, uh, oh, be happy type message, you know. Yeah, I want to get something going. I want to study the Bible together and learn. Look, I'm learning at the same time. Amen. You know, and it, it's good to have a small group. Why? Uh, I remember Kenny McDonald said to me uh, when, when he first came around, and I was frustrated. I was very frustrated. Numbers weren't high and everything. And I, uh, he said, you know, uh, he said, uh, you're young. I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm 50-something years old. I'm young. He goes, you're just young. He says, uh, you're young in, your, in the spirit of the ministry. He says uh, to me, he says, I want you to realize something. Enjoy the small numbers. Amen. He says, because when the large ones come in, it's going to change. Mm -hmm. And he was right. When the large numbers come in, things do change. And uh, I, I got to tell you, with 40 people, I, uh, when you get like to the area of 40 people, uh, your life changes. What's that now? You're running around and you got to, it's problems after problems after problems. You get a small group and you teach them and, and you know, it's, it's something, that the problems are, are, are away from the small group. Like, I'm not talking about you're not going to have troubles. Right. What I'm saying is they go through their problems because they understand what the scriptures are yeah. saying. God ain't taking you. The, the, the people that are new, they think God's going to pull them out of the problem. God doesn't say that. What does he say? I'm going, I want to be in the boat with you. Right. The, these troubles and these trials, uh, you just want to see what? You're in the storm. Look, you've got to look out of the storm and say, what, our Lord, are you there? Is that you out there? You want to see what? you got to see the Lord in the storm here. And in the end, you've got to give him the glory. Why? Amen. Because that's what you want to do. You want to get him in the boat. You want to get him. Why? Is the Lord going to die? Lord, we perished. Did, did you notice what they said? We, you and I, Lord, we're perishing. Mm -hmm. Lord, you know, Bible Baptist Church, you don't want this church to go under, Lord. Can't go under. Right. That's, a, that's me. I was in a chore. I didn't have that, but that's me working on emotions and stuff like that. And here we are, and he says, uh, fear the name pros and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him what? Mercy. mercy. Amen. Grant him mercy. 
in the sight of this man. Why? For I, I was the king's cupbearer. You know what he's got here? He's in a position. He's in a position right now to get doors open. Yep. There's no mistakes in what the Lord's doing right here. That's right. He got the people ready. Ezra's pump, pumped them up. Now he gets the right guy to be the leader that can move yeah, people out. What's that? He's got the ability to open up the doors. He understands the logistics of it. He understands the accountability of it. Hey, look, not everybody, not everybody can be the preacher. Right. There has to be things that work around. Look, uh, most of your battles are lost in the logistics. Yeah, that's right. Patton was losing people left and right, and the reason why is because he couldn't. He was he was very uh, he he hurt when it came to moving logistics. Now there was a guy named Douglas MacArthur who was hated by the people. But let me tell you something about Douglas MacArthur. If you study him, and I study him, this man started with nothing, and then he was able to win a war when he started out with a brigade in Australia. And he took the fight to them. And he had nothing. He even said it when he got to Korea. He turns around to Truman and he says to him, he says, he says, Mr. President, there is one thing I, I would ask. And he says, what? Don't leave me alone like you did World War II in Japan. Yeah. That's something to think about. Why? He was great with logistics. And guess what? He, he didn't lose many people like other generals. It's just something to think about. You know how to, in the Civil War, you know how to low-level casualties for what he did? Uh, General Jackson. None. You know what General Jackson did just before he came out to fight? He had the gospel preached. Yep. Now, he, was a, he, he had a Calvinistic thought, and he thought everything was God's will, and it was destined by faith. But you know, he never stopped to get down on his knees. And he would even bring General Lee in. And General Lee would say, I got orders for you. And he'd start talking. He'd say, General Lee, before you give the orders, could we pray? Right. The Lord will bless that. The Lord is looking to bless that. Type of stuff. Here, he's in the right, the right place. He can have the doors opened up here. He's in that position. He's got he's the cupbearer. He's right there with Artaxerxes. He's able to deal with it. But you have to understand something. There was a preparation of the heart before the instance. Mm -hmm. What's that? This has taken three to four months to prepare. Why? It has to start here. Amen. Amen. Look, if you're going to serve the Lord, it can't start here. Mm -hmm. Come it on. has to start here. Why? Because you got to start, the prayer has to start. You want the Lord to bless it. Look, you can be like Israel and turn around, set the battle up, get everybody in position, and then all get together and pray and try and get God to jump on what you started, right. your plan. Right. Or you start the prayer right, and have the Lord all the way through in the plan, and everything will change. Amen. Prayer. Prayer. Everything by prayer everything hey look you, you we my house shall be a house of prayer and you have met it made it into a den of thieves now if the house is full of prayer what are you stealing prayers come on i don't understand he said merchandise yeah but they were stealing prayer that's why right. that's what it was supposed to be a house of prayer what happened to the prayers the first thing that goes on you you ever notice that the first thing that goes on you is your prayer life it's a communication thing. Your communication, your prayer life, and Bible reading. Why? What you did was you put the you, you turn around, put the Lord on radio listening silence. Yeah, come on. Now everything's changed. You've got to have the preparation of the heart and get God in it from the beginning. Amen. That's what Nehemiah's doing. Nehemiah's saying, I, I gotta have the Lord on this. And I gotta tell you something. Considering that Esther happens in between Ezra and Nehemiah, happens right in there, you have to understand something. Mordecai plays a big part. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he was the vice president. Right. And it works its way down through this. Come on. What's up? Oh. His daughter's here. Okay. Okay. It's just... So he's in the right position to open up the doors. And we see a, a very easy chapter 
in, uh, in Nehemiah where, uh, but you'll notice something. The first thing he said, he first thing he does is when he hears bad news, is he goes to the Lord. He gets yes. serious with the Lord. Why? Well, it's it's no different than you. The first thing we like to do is go complain to our friends. Yeah, come on. Well, let me ask you: Are your friends going to change the situation? Amen. Yeah. I'm I'm telling you, your first the flesh, the Amalek in you. Right. The first thing you want to do is you want to tell somebody about, hey, look, you need to you need to hear my troubles. <laughs> you, you never went to the Lord first. Mm. I can't change your situation. I can't change your troubles. Why would you come to me? Go to the Lord first. Then if you need something to open up later, then come. Then come. Because maybe you'll need counseling or something like that. But don't come to don't go to a person first. Today it's what? Go to Facebook. Yeah. Put it out on Facebook and so everybody can do what? Oh, I agree, I like it, and this and that. Who cares? Who cares? Amen. They love your misery. Yeah. You think God loves your misery? Go to the right source. Amen. Don't go to the wrong sources. Go to the right source. I can't complain to the Lord. People that complain die. In the, did David die? Come on. He put his complaint before the Lord. He went to the right person. And didn't you ever notice that when you complain to the Lord, if you go too much, didn't you ever notice he does tell you how, show you how stupid you are. Mm -hmm. In that, if you're being stupid, he shows you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Yep. But he's, he's a lot better than I am with it. Why? Because he shows you with compassion that I can't show it sometimes. I try to be compassionate sometimes and, you know, I'm not, I'm not a very, con I have a problem with emotion. I have a hard time dealing with it. Why? Because I wasn't always emotional. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are saying wrong. I've been with you long enough. You're big old softy. But that's with you. Why? Because you guys have touched my heart. So I am able to be with you. My wife will turn around and say, he's a hard guy. Amen. <laughs> All right. It was a good chapter. Amen. Amen. I know she didn't disagree with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the I have been the subject of many conversations between her and Lori. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for the, the, the message tonight, Lord God. Thanks for talking to us, Lord God. And uh, Lord God, I want to thank you for Barry this morning getting saved. Yes. Uh, I want to thank you, Lord, that uh, you, you took some uh, you took a time out and you passed by this place this morning, Lord Father, and uh, there was a, this is a day when Jesus passed by. And uh, Lord, I thank you that this place will never be the same now that Barry got saved. Lord Father, and we would ask you, Lord, to keep sending people our way that uh, to get saved, Lord Father. Send them in our work, send them, uh, send them in our lifetime, in our lives, to people to get saved, Lord Father. Uh, we want to be used of thee, Lord Father. Send us a... Uh, Willing servants, Lord Father, we would ask you, Lord God, for laborers to go out into your field, Lord Father. We'd ask you, Lord, that you would uh, that you would fill the place, and and Lord, with people that we have, uh, we don't, we can't turn around and take any credit for, them. Lord God. We ask you for three families, and and Lord, uh, uh, you provide, you provide, Lord God. We you, you've done so much for us here, and, and provided for us that we can't even take credit in a little place like this, in a place of nowhere. Uh, Lord Father, let our hearts be like that, that we, we would put that towards you. And, and Lord, and says uh, to fear God and to eschew evil. Lord God, let's be a people listen to thy commandments and fear you. No, we're not. Lord God, let's be a people that want to stay in fellowship and, and, and maintain our fellowship with you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ. Lord Father, Lord God, let us have more faith. Have more faith in something that's a gift. Uh, Lord, I need more faith. Sometimes I just walk away with it, and I need more. Lord, Father, help me with that. Just ask the Lord to bless these two again. Bless these two. They're going to go out. Lord, Father, they're going to go back down far. And I pray as they go down the way, Lord, Father, that they get to, uh, when they go to fill up with gas, there'll be somebody to meet them there. Somebody on the other side that's needing of salvation. Uh, they get in their path, Lord, Father. I, I pray that when they get back to uh, uh, their church and, to their pastor, Lord Father, they be servants to the Most High through that pastor. 
I thank you for who I have in here, my servants. I thank you for Miss Yvonne, and she, she does her little uh, trap ministry, Lord Father. Lord Father, and I, I thank you, Lord, you have a shelf you have enough to uh, left her on the side, Lord Father. She thought she was. And I thank you to use her. Use her. I thank you to use Wendell and his family, Lord Father. I thank you that you use those people to be servants. I thank you, Lord, you brought Grady back to you. Lord God, a person we've been praying for. Lord Father, and I, and I, I just ask you if you would, Lord God, to maintain in his heart he, that he's going to stay. He's going to stay. Give him that sense of urgency. Lord God, thank you for a good wife. Thank you, Lord God, that you blessed me with a good wife, that you provided it. I couldn't have it. Bless them. Thank you, Lord, that you provided any other all of us with good people in our lives. Lord, Father, I, I want to thank you again for the service tonight. I want to thank you for being good to us. And we love you, Lord, and we, we do ask for those spiritual blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.